Suicide Squad is upon us, so let's talk facts. Suicide Squad facts for the movie Suicide Squad. 50 of them, on characters that weren't included, the Joker, Harley Quinn, the difficulties of certain prostheses, details on the role Batman plays, among a whole lot of other stuff. Also stick around till the end for a chance to win a loot crate. This isn't a sponsored video, do I have to announce that? Probably, probably not. But I thought, hey, why not do a regular Sunday video giveaway thing? So I'm giving that a go. Alright, let's get started. This film was rumoured to be getting an R rating after the success of Deadpool, but ended up as a PG-13, which is what the film had always been envisioned to be. Deathstroke was initially to make an appearance, possibly played by Joe Manganiello, but the idea was nixed early on. Director David Ayer wanted to tell this particular story based on this comic book property because the idea of creating a world to him is interesting. Warner Brothers was forced to release the first Suicide Squad trailer early because of the footage that was leaked from Comic Con 2015. They tried to contain it, but when they realised that was real dumb, because that's not how the internet works, they reluctantly released it. David Ayer cut Jared Leto's, Jai Courtney's and Karen Fukuhara's hair, as well as shaved part of Margot Robbie's eyebrows for some reason in preparation for their roles. The El Diablo makeup initially took five hours to apply until they whittled it down to three, which is weird because it's just, it's fake tattoos. Why is that five? Doesn't matter. Next thing! King Shark was considered for the film, but Aya didn't want a big CGI character, so Killer Croc was chosen instead. Adewale, Akin Noya, Agbaji, bloody hell, that's, that's definitely wrong, watched a video about a real life Japanese cannibal every day to get into the role of Killer Croc. His colours were initially to be more in line with the comics, green and the like, but the final design used a more muted, toned down palette. His prosthetics took five hours to apply, which actually makes sense. I mean, look at this! Look at the difference! Why is. Why is both five hours? Tom Hardy had to drop out of the role of Brick Flag due to scheduling conflicts with The Revenant and was quoted as saying that he hated losing the work, but boy did he love watching Leonardo DiCaprio get mauled by a bear. <laughs> Bradley Cooper, Mark Wahlberg, Joel Edgerton and Tom Cruise were all considered, among others, for the part. Oprah was also in contention for the role of Amanda Waller. Before Will Smith secured the Deadshot role, Leonardo DiCaprio, Jason Statham, Ewan McGregor, John Hamm, Robert Pattinson and Keanu Reeves were all considered. This marks the first DC Comics role for Will Smith, but he has confirmed that years ago, he was once offered the part of Superman. Jared Leto and Margot Robbie didn't rehearse their scenes together to give them a more unpredictable feel. Ryan Gosling turned down the Joker due to his reluctance to sign on for a multi-picture deal. And you know what, he might have looked a little something like this. Jared Leto was unsure whether to take on the role of the Joker after Heath Ledger, but came to terms with it because multiple actors had taken on the part previously. David Ayer has now confirmed, definitively debunking a popular fan theory, that this version of the Joker is not the former Robin, Jason Todd. Jared Leto shaved his eyebrows to look more unsettling. The first official look at the Joker was released to celebrate 75 years of the character, but the actual first look was a long-range photo of Jared Leto showing someone else a photo of him in character. Henry Cavill pranked the cast of the Suicide Squad at Comic-Con by doing a, a funny prank. This is the prank. Good, good prank. Good, good to see. What, what a good, what a good one. Many of the Joker's different looks in this film are inspired from the comics. This one from The Dark Knight Returns. This one from The New 52. This one from. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know this one. This movie will release almost 50 years to the day of Batman 1966, which was the first theatrical appearance of the Joker. Scott Eastwood's father, Clint Eastwood, was considered for the role of Two Face in the 1960s series. He was a news anchor or something, and his scars came from a television set exploding in his face. Amanda Waller has appeared in many mediums, and even in film before, in 2011's Green Lantern, subtitle, now you have to wait many years for another Green Lantern movie, because we ballsed up this one. The Suicide Squad plot was removed from the CW TV series Arrow to make way for them in the movie. David Ayer said the reshoots weren't to make it funnier, as reported, but was simply a way of the studio giving him more resources to make the film as good as it could be. He also said the final action battle sequence was the most difficult part of the filming process. Speaking of difficult parts of filming, Jared Leto did some weird stuff to become the Joker. Here's some of them. Firstly, he stayed in character the entire time. He sent Margot Robbie a live black rat. He sent Will Smith some bullets. He sent some sex toys and some porn magazines to Karen Fukuhara, whose mother then found them and was like, what the hell is this? He watched a ton of real life violent crimes on YouTube and noted, not all acts of violence were committed in a frenzy and a lot of people remained quite calm. He sent a henchman to drop a pig carcass on the table at rehearsal. And by henchman, I mean probably just his personal assistant 
who doesn't get paid enough. Viola Davis didn't receive anything from Leto and said if she did, her husband would have taken care of him. In what sense? Well, I don't know, probably something like this. <laughs> Jay Hernandez also shaved his eyebrows for the role, which is what, like the third eyebrow fact that I've mentioned? I don't know what that's about. This is Harley Quinn's first ever live action movie, but she was actually set to appear in Batman Unchained as Harley Quinn, the Joker's daughter, which would have been the sequel to Batman and Robin. She did, however, appear in live action in both Birds of Prey and Arrow. Margot Robbie gave a number of cast and crew members squad tattoos, but spelt the one she gave Jai Courtney's assistant wrong as SWAD. Like Jared Leto's assistant, that person also doesn't get paid enough. Emma Roberts turned down the role of Harley Quinn. Olivia Wilde, Emily Browning, Amanda Seyfried were also considered, among others. Margot Robbie learned to hold her breath for five minutes for a one minute underwater scene. So, I don't, I don't know why, I guess that's that was pointless. Rumors of a Harley Quinn movie have been abundant, but Margot Robbie has said that nothing solid is currently in the works. Karen Fukuhara featured prominently on the Disney Channel as a teen and once interviewed the cast of Pirates of the Caribbean, one of those movies, hopefully the, the good one. Much of the film is set in Midway City, a fictional DC location that's not been explored on the big screen before. Batman is the one who reportedly put all the Suicide Squad members in jail. Ben Affleck is reportedly not credited for his role in Suicide Squad, and the role of Batman is said to be predominantly played by a stunt performer. And lastly, Batman is viewed almost entirely from the villain's perspective, like this monstrous force that everyone is afraid of, and for good reason. Okay, that was quite a lot, Prob probably too much. Now if you want to win a loot crate, which I'll announce next Sunday, where there'll also be a chance to win another one, just... I don't know, just leave any comment. Maybe answer the question, what DC characters would you like to see in the next Suicide Squad movie? And then I'll know that, that maybe you want one. If you did want a loot crate, I've got a link and a promo code for $3 off. And again, I get literally zero money for that. I just thought, hey, if you want it, there, there it is. Or, you know, just be the person that wins this one and then, you know, don't worry about it. Okay, so I've got a lot of Suicide Squad stuff coming this week. If you're a subscriber with notifications on, you can get all that. And I also have a podcast called The Weekly Planet. It's linked below. And also now with its own YouTube channel where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. So, you know, check that out if you want to... I'm going to finish the video. All right, that'll do it. Thanks for watching, everyone. Take care.